this is so hi everyone we are now recording the tripods tribute call to mm -hmm. wyatt ray and all tripod angels everywhere and while we allow people to join us we're going to play a short video and renee's going to explain what we're watching so brownie's mom nancy gifted us this amazing video you're about to see and we're going to let it play. It's it's a little bit long, but um, you'll get the gist of it. It's a beautiful song and we'll play like a chorus of it um, just for a minute. And um, if you'd like to see the rest of it, it's in our discussion forums and we'll link to it later. Uh, we were going to promise not to have any crying on this show, but um, that might be difficult. I, <laughs> um, and it oops. sounds like we still have something. Let's... <laughs> oh, now I'm really going to cry. Okay. Jim's going to stop playing the video. And, okay, and we're back. And we're back. <laughs> We've never done this before, you guys. Yes, we have. Plenty not, of times. not a tribute like this. And we've had Zoom meetings, but this is really emotional and um, hard to think and, and you know, keep things flowing. So we're, we're going to do our best. And I am just so touched by all these people who um, 
are showing up and looks like Dorla needs to be let in. Um, and um, so, okay. So again, welcome everyone. Um, for those of you just joining us, you probably know who we are. We're Jim and Renee, we founded Tripods and we recently lost Wyatt Ray, our second tripod spokes dog for the past 12 years. And believe it or not, we do have some sort of an agenda. We kind, yeah, we kind of do. So this is what we're thinking. How how this will play out? Um, we uh, we want you to share your stories, and whether those stories are about Wyatt or your own tripod angels, um, feel free to share them in the chat. And if you'd like to say something, um, raise your hand. There's a hand icon feature at the bottom of the app, right? uh where it says raise hand in the in first of all at the bottom of the main screen if you're not familiar with the zoom you hit the chat icon and then the participants icon if you like to see who else is here and under the chat icon you'll see the ability to raise hand and if you raise your hand we'll call on you later to share a few words about your own tripod angels or wyatt or um and we had scheduled sally's introduction to happen right now but um, is she available? But can you unmute Sally? Is she here? Sally has not joined us with audio. Uh, so that's a, a technical difficulty that we're not going to be able to hear Sally and she may not be hearing us. Sally is our uh, Tripods Foundation support representative, very active in the chat. She's an angel and you, she was going to introduce. You might know her as Benny55. She uh, She's mom to uh, Hannah and Mary Myrtle and Frankie and um, anyhow, um, I may check back with her in a minute. Uh, I have her on the phone right now. I was trying to walk her through the technical stuff, but um, okay. So we'll, we may be able to get to Sally in a bit. <clears throat> right now, we just wanted to let everybody know what happened because I know that it came all of a sudden. And even though Wyatt was 12 years old, he was still such a puppy. But the surprise was on purpose. Um, you might have heard from the past few months that we alluded to Wyatt Ray declining. And over the past few weeks, that kind of spiraled worse and worse. And, and for the past month, um, we knew this was coming. And we scheduled saying goodbye about two weeks prior to the event. And we didn't share that because we needed to practice what we preach and be more dog. <clears throat> from those of us, those of you who who know us and love us we knew we were going to get an outpouring of support and we were going to get all sorts of hugs and kisses on social media and and and, and which we phone have calls and it's and been amazing that's wonderful but during the time frame leading up to this we really just wanted to make Wyatt's last day is the best they could be for him and us and focus on that alone so we're sorry for not sharing it in advance for those who don't know the story of the past 12 years with Wyatt Ray as Tripod Spokes Dog, I'm sure we would have received lots of questions. And have you tried this? And have you done that? And well, yeah, we did everything we possibly could for Wyatt. We did. And <clears throat> earlier this summer, uh, he really started having some mobility issues. And the uh, the vets at CSU, we did an online consult with them and they believed based on how he was moving and all the other signs like incontinence that um, he had a condition called lumbosacral disease, which is a spinal compression. And it's pretty common in shepherds. And when it's a three-legged shepherd, it's especially tough. And there's really no cure. There's a surgery that could or couldn't have worked, but we weren't willing to do that because why it was already so compromised he was 12 years old on three legs for his whole um, life our severe osteoarthritis in the tarsus which we addressed in many different with many different modalities um, the rehab exercises you've seen him doing eventually just became tiresome for him and weren't for a long time they were preventing him from getting worse. But once they weren't even doing that, it was time to just stop and enjoy life. So we focused on those, um, really the last month together with him, just in making the most of every day. We did a lot of stroller walks and woke up the neighborhoods at early hours and if in the evening. If evenings. you've seen the video of Wyatt in the stroller barking his head off, um, that's what he loved to do when he was in the stroller. Um, but I really think that Wyatt hung on until my dad passed um, in September. Um, my dad had been sick for a while and I really think that Wyatt was just there to make sure he transitioned okay and make sure that 
we were okay. We're not obviously, um, but we'll we'll get through it because that's what Jerry taught us, and that's what Wyatt taught us. So, what did Wyatt mean to us? Um, Wyatt Wyatt had a really tough upbringing. He came to us after he'd been neglected. That's how he lost his leg, and um, he had a lot of baggage, and it was baggage that we weren't prepared for. I don't think anybody's really prepared for what their dog has in store for them, but um, Wyatt was, he was a handful. So I'll step back a little bit further. And, you know, most of you here know the story of Jerry and why we founded Tripods. And, you know, Jerry got cancer at age eight and died at 10 and, you know, traveled around the country with us for two years. After he passed, um, we were asked, are you going to keep the Tripods community going? And of course we said we had to, it's his legacy. And then about nine months later or so, uh, I see Martha's here, Martha and Ralph are here, and um, they're with the Oaktown Pack. And at the time, they had um, multiple three-legged German shepherds, and then they fostered a new one and said, you need a new spokes dog, and it's time to meet Wyatt. He's a wonderful dog. And well, sure enough, meeting him, we knew we were going to come home with him. And once we did, he became the new spokes dog and traveled with us around the country for the past 12 years and taught us so much about the importance of rehab. And early on in his life, you know, we did lots of things and, and played with fetch it and discovered that there were lots of quote unquote explosive exercises that maybe if we hadn't done for a couple of years, maybe those things might have extended his life and prevented the osteoarthritis and the lumbosacral disease from developing as quickly as they did. But again, he was, you know, 12 years old. And it's never long enough, is it? It's never long enough. Um, he outlived Jerry by two years. And I thought that Wyatt was going to go until he was 15. I thought he was going to be a <laughs> grouchy old shepherd ordering everybody around. That was my dream. Um, but Wyatt had other plans. Nature had other plans. So he taught us different lessons. And um, some of those were patience, patience and, and a TC, one. longtime friend and fan and um, runner with the Od Odorolox sled dogs, which Jer uh, Jerry and Wyatt both got to run with. She has an interesting question and wants to ask. I want a list of all the things, the, the naughty things Wyatt ate during his life. So if you're not aware and haven't followed Wyatt's blog too much, <laughs> Wyatt you. has ingested numerous things over his life, many of which put him in the hospital or caused us to induce vomiting. Um, it, it made us Thanks question. to TC, we learned how to do <laughs> yeah. deal with these TC things. TC did teach us how to, how to make Wyatt vomit whatever he ate weird stuff. Um, so it all began with a road flare. Uh, yeah. On a road trip with Wyatt Ray, we looked in the back and he was chewing on a road flare. And sure enough, that didn't bother him much at all. But over the years, uh, let's see, what did it, Wyatt ate? A pair of denim shorts. Ate my shorts. Two of uh, two or three dish towels. Um, a five thousand dollar dish towel, which if we did not have <laughs> pet insurance. Uh, sure, we pro he would probably still have been with us, but that was a very tough call. Oh, um, my God. That was he hard. had uh, obstruction surgery to, to remove that one. We then learned how to induce vomiting, and he had eaten um, one week um, at our current location here where we're back. He ate a box of tissues, and I do mean box. the box oh, and oh, the full new box of tissues. tissues. We were able to catch that quickly enough and got him to vomit that up and gave him some charcoal uh, so, to deal with it. And two days later, <laughs> he did the exact same thing with a roll of toilet paper. Um, so he had some issues or he, he was had, suicidal. I'm not sure. CC and I used to joke that Wyatt was very suicidal. Um, he ate two Thanksgiving pies one year. And the most beautiful pies Renee had ever made. And we were meeting with people. We do travel full time in our RV. So we were in another person's RV and went back to get the pies. And they were hidden in the bedroom with a baby gate. And it was all knocked over and nothing but foil, but not all the foil. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and yeah, Wyatt had a lot of close calls. Uh, he definitely, um, he was like a cat. He had a lot of lives and he kept bouncing back. And that's why we thought, oh, this dog's going to All the way forever. up until the end. I mean, yeah. one month 
prior to his passing, we were going down to visit Renee's family and, and, and you know, cope with the hospice care of her father. And on the way down, we stopped to pick up some goodies for her mom and came back out to the rib and rig and Wyatt had eaten a napkin. Dinner napkin. The entire Cloth, thing was gone. Just, fabric. We saw powder of it. Just So I believe he pulverized it, but up until the end, he never really passed it. And boy, did he have some stinky farts that last month. <laughs> so the so uh, there's a lot there, TC. I, I think one of these days I'll, I'll have to think back and do a whole long list. But... A treat pack, you know, a, a, a trainer's treat bag, including the belt and the and buckles the and the treats inside. Yeah. Swallowed. Yeah. Um, and past most of it, zippers from a shirt. So there were many things, um, but there's other lessons. So he taught us lots of things about patience. And those of you who have ever heard him knows that he taught us humility. Wyatt did um, everything that a teenager, a human teenager does to embarrass their parents. Um, we like to joke that Wyatt was our payback for not having kids, human kids, because he just, he did so many crazy things things that embarrass the heck out of us and and sent us hiding <laughs> in many ways he was a special needs child and yeah. very outspoken and very loud with many outbursts and he um as he grew older became dog aggressive to smaller dogs primarily um great with kids great with people great with bigger dogs but whenever he saw a smaller dog um he'd be very loud and act aggressive and, and, and we knew how to cope with those situations. Um, but what all of those situations taught us was that we shouldn't judge anybody when we see a dog who's like Wyatt. We used to do that. We were clueless. We thought dogs just need training and their humans just need to, to get on with that training so that they can have a dog that didn't act like that. Well, Wyatt threw that theory out the window. He really taught us that sometimes despite your best efforts, um, your dog's going to be your dog and, and no, nothing you can do is going to tamp that down a whole lot. So. Another lesson from long ago is, is you get what you deserve. And um, Wyatt taught us that in the sense that during Jerry, when we had this angel dog, um, he was a German shepherd mix. And whenever we saw real German shepherds, um, we would say, oh, Jerry, you need to look more like that. Or we'd see a barking German shepherd. And so you need to act like that. Well, when we got Wyatt, we understood what a true German shepherd is and what it entails to train and, and keep occupied and busy and well-behaved. So a lot of the lessons that Wyatt taught us were, were the same lessons that all dogs try to teach us, you know, um, be kind, live for the moment, and, and don't worry about the future. All we have is now. But he tended to do that with his big I call it the iron paw, you know, he just like, he didn't know how to be subtle. That dog was not a subtle dog. <laughs> On the technical side, we learned so much about rehabilitation and pain management and um, coping with senior tripods as, you know, growing up with a tripod from eight months old. If you don't know Wyatt's story, um, he was a victim of neglect and uh, was tethered in a backyard and lost his rear leg due to uh, neglect. So at about eight months old and shortly after that, he hit the road with us and lived 12 years. So we saw all those phases and, and we learned about um, rehab exercises and interviewed many orthopedic surgeons and rehab specialists because of him and want to share that information with people. So it, it, when I think about the gifts that Wyatt gave to us, you know, let me back up. Um, Jerry's gift was starting tripods. Jerry, his... Jerry's the reason tripods exist. With Wyatt, Wyatt gave us the chance to, to learn what being three-legged is like for a dog's entire life. And that is a huge gift because now we have this knowledge and this understanding that will go on to the next generation of the tripods community. And you know, we, we don't we don't take it for granted that a dog on three legs is three legs is going to be great up until they're 12 years old. So we're taking that knowledge that that Wyatt was able to put in front of us and we will continue to do what we do at tripods. Knowing what 
I know now, um, living with a senior tripod from a puppy, I now cringe when I hear people say, oh, let him be a dog, he'll be fine. You know, they have no limitations. I see comments like this on social media and I, I cringe, I just have to kind of butt in once in a while you know, he's a Budinsky. I am a Budinsky and I, my job is to educate people because yes, tripods do have limitations. So with that said, um, do you want to show some photos of why you wanted to share? Well, actually let's this? see if we can get Sally. Um, it looks like Sally is She's joined connected. Us, but, uh, hold She's on, at the very, in, oh, what? In the, oh, Stacy. Stacy's here. Look at We're that. Welcome, Hi Stacy. So did, did Sally, she, Sally, Sally has not connected her audio. Sally, you need to connect your audio. Mm -hmm. I, I hope you can hear me. Wait, hang on. Okay. What was that? Did. So, okay, uh, hang on one second. Okay, <laughs> Jim, right now, I think is a good time to read from um, Be More Dog. He had a little passage from sure. the book that he wanted to read. Sure. And yeah. I'm going to try to walk Sally through connecting. So she's going to try and get Sally online. And any of you who have or have not yet read Be More Dog, that's the story of our travels with Jerry and how we founded the Tripods community. And early versions of this book had me. Uh, Wyatt was the narrator and no one knew in the story. And there was hints about German shepherds and, you know, things about, you know, real German shepherds like we were talking about. And at the end, there was going to be this big reveal that, oh, Wyatt is the narrator. And our editor said, readers don't really like surprises. And we realized Wyatt needs his own book. I, don't, I didn't want him to be an afterthought in this book. But in the tripods, um, I'm going to share my screen, screen briefly here and share this browser and hopefully we will um we should be sharing this now um in the bean or dog blog we're sharing excerpts from the book and photos from way back when and what we're seeing here is not wyatt this photo still freaks me out to this day and what it is is us with jerry here on the left at a farmer's market in Fort Pierce farmer, uh, Fort Pierce farmer's market in Florida. And we were hawking vegetables at a farm where we were working at the time. And this shepherd walks up and um, why it wasn't even born yet. We had no idea that this photo would play such an important role later in life. Um, but he met this dog that I want to read about. And I'll show you down here that, you know, Wyatt followed in Jerry's footprints all around the country. But that farmer's market photo was really special. And I'll just leave you with this one while I read about that experience at the farmer's market. Later in the day, after shoppers had departed, depleted their inventory, a beautiful German shepherd nudged through the crowd, anxious to meet Jerry. He was on the darker side of the breed with stunning angular features and large pointed ears. The dog walked under the table and with one bark and swift paw punch to Jerry's shoulder quickly established his rank. That is something Wyatt would do. Jerry's right ear sat low as he looked up at Jim without barking. He seemed uncertain about how to greet the big dog, big bold dog Renee was fawning over. See, this is what you're supposed to look like. Renee called from the other side of the table as she leaned over to caress the shepherd's coarse black fur like Wyatt's. Like most purebred shepherds, he was aloof and wary, but claimed his territory by sitting at their feet. Jerry, look up over here. Quickly, Renee snapped a photo of the two dogs, never knowing that someday the snapshot would ultimately reveal their future as a pack. And this is the photo that we're talking about in that scene. And it just looks so much like Wyatt and the behavior was so much like Wyatt that it was just really uncanny. Um, we just had a lot of those scenes throughout the book and they still hit home. So while Renee continues to try and get Sally on board, we wanted to show you some more photos of Wyatt. Um, this is in his blog. You can go to wyattraydog.tripods.com to see all these, but it's again, just some sounds like we're not gonna um no. did you want to go through these photos i'm just gonna oops <laughs> yeah so we dug up these these really cute photos of wyatt um that was his first month with us you can see he's still... it was at a canine cancer walk in yeah. colorado and he's only about eight nine months about old nine months there. there you can see those huge paws of his and 
this is what I mean by, you know, why it was like any other dog. He lived in the moment. And that is one of my favorite photos of him Reno, catching, catching leaves in the air. Reno, Nevada. And then um, a certain <laughs> trainer instructed us or, or she she was uh it was the caesar milan school of training back then and i think wyatt knew that he uh he was not going to get away with anything with this woman so that's one of our favorite pictures because she was the only one who could ever get wyatt to do exactly what she and wanted she him to did do help us establish our pack hierarchy prior to that i remember a scene where well, i thought Wyatt was doing this high five trick with us but it turns out he was punching me <laughs> so we quickly established our pack hierarchy and that learned iron ways. Paw. but with the, the the spray bottle and such those days those days are gone we don't do that gone. anymore um, and here's another this is one of my favorites this is wyatt at the alamo in san antonio um wyatt somehow he just knew that we were in a very special place and he was a good boy he behaved he himself behaved he didn't embarrass us he he walked <laughs> so pets are not allowed in the Alamo, but he was wearing a harness and we just stepped in line and had someone confronted us, we would have said, okay, bye. But because he was wearing a harness and had three he legs. He looked like a military working dog. Um, we got, okay. We were allowed sorry, in. We and um, I think the only other person that has ever urinated in the backyard of the Alamo <laughs> was Ozzy Osbourne. True story. Uh, <laughs> but did see, did that? Wyatt did that. So um, anyhow, this is these are all some really fun photos oops, that are in uh, Wyatt's blog. And there's his friend, Max. Max Maximut is one of the original Tripods members from way back. And there's Cody Ray, the only woman his besides alpha. the trainer that Wyatt would listen to. Um, there's Maggie and so Mag Tripug Maggie was a very senior dog at the time. Wyatt was much younger. Yes. Showing respect. And that was that was impressive. And this is one of our favorites. Wyatt really did have a goofy side, but it wasn't something he showed to other people. He would only do that for us. It was like, oh yeah, one of those vulnerable dog poses that only we got to see sometimes, not always. But in the he end, loved rolling in the grass and those events were, were far and few between, but when he knew no one was looking, he would just roll over back and forth for us. And there's Wyatt just looking so gorgeous with the Aspens in Colorado. And he, he basically followed in Jerry's footsteps. And I think for a long time, you know, maybe we put that on him too much. Maybe we were, we weren't comparing him, but he just, he had a lot to live up to. And it took a lot of uh, growing with Wyatt to accept that he was his own dog. And this is one of our favorites. This is with one, <laughs> oh my God, this is one day with running TC, with the sled dogs, running with the Odorolox. This is his lookalike. Pack. Pack. Austin, there's Wyatt working out. And then Wyatt in his wheelchair on the first day. And he just took to that like nobody's business. So, we, we went through a lot together and um, it went by so fast as anybody knows those those 12 years just like, where did they go oh my god um, and speaking of where did the time go I'm looking at the time and I would like to get to a poem that was written by one of our first members in the discussion forums this is written by uh, Tika's mom Kim and I was digging through our, our coping with loss forums and found this way back i believe it was in 2012 when she published this in the forums it's she wrote it so check this out it's called my legacy yes i am slowing down my beautiful body has failed me i know that you've been sad but know that i'll soon be at peace you tried so valiantly to save me i tried so valiantly to cheer you but all of the love we had could not beat our enemy so I leave you with my legacy of what I was able to teach you. Follow my lead, for I shall never leave you. I taught you to take time to smell the breeze, sit and absorb the sun. I taught you that every new thing is wonderment. So stop and enjoy the moment. I taught you to be a clown and just be goofy because life is too short to take seriously. I taught you to sing loudly off key and yell your happiness out to the world. So now the time has come and I must go. I'm not afraid for now it's easy. Just promise me you'll have no regrets and never forget 
Take time to smell the breeze, absorb each wonder in the world. Dance like a clown and sing off key. Just stop and live for the moment. Follow what I've taught you and then I shall never be far away. And that was called My Legacy by Tika's mom, Kim. These are the kinds of gifts that you, the Tripods community, have given to the world through this. It's not a website. It's a, it's a, it's a community of people who are so amazing and have really, every day you guys restore our faith in humanity, especially at a time like this. I don't know what we would do without you. Um, you know, it, Tripods is very small when Jerry left us and um, we were very much supported back then. But right now to feel so much outpouring of love at, on our website, on Facebook, on Instagram, it just, it blows our minds. We are so honored, you guys. And we are so touched that you would take time to be here today. So with that. What was really touching was, Renee, where'd you go? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Hi, it's our magical new tripods headquarters. <laughs> um, what was really touching is the tripods community is so long lasting. It's 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 forever. We had people give us an outpouring of support and love about hearing about Wyatt, who hadn't visited tripods for years. Yeah, for years. I mean, Tika's mom is like way back to when we first started the forum. And I see Heather is here and Heather, mom to, to Tripod Zeus, she goes back to 2009 with us. It's that Heather? I mean, yeah, that wow, Heather. Wow, thank you. This so, long time supporter and friend. I just want to interrupt real quick. If you guys want to speak, um, now's the time to go ahead and raise your hand. I see Emmy is here. Emmy met Wyatt at blog pause conferences. That was the social media marketing conference that Wyatt went to a number of times and I spoke at a few times. Wyatt joined us at um, WVC and veterinary conferences over the years. And a number of you have... Um, Wow, it's just amazing. really met Wyatt and and just really touched our hearts. Karen's here. Are there any hands raised? Um, I don't see anyone who has raised their hands. So if anyone does wanted to share something about Wyatt or your own tripod angels, put a comment in the chat now so we know without having to scroll through and we gladly <laughs> share some comments. Emmy, Emmy's holding up a picture. Look at that. that she took of Wyatt. <laughs> That's so cute. Oh my gosh. Go ahead and unmute Emmy. Emmy, that is so adorable. That is Emmy. We're going to unmute you. There you are. You're unmuted now. Emmy, thank you so much for joining us and sharing a photo oh. from 2009 or 10, uh, probably. Uh, 15, 2015. 2015. And this was um, Nashville, I think. And um, Wyatt was just such a such a good boy. And um, I was able to pet him once. <laughs> <laughs> a perfect example of how Wyatt acted in populated places. Well, it's a typical Shepherd. Um, but thank you for sharing that. That is so. That's such a great memory. Well, I've got a few. I've been sharing some, and so um, I'll put a few more up here. But I'm. You did a wonderful thing with um, tripods. You do a wonderful thing. And I am wondering, as someone who uses social media a lot, how can I promote the work of oh. tripods on social media? Well, funny so you say that. That um, is Thank you the for big announcement that, that we, um, we wanted to come back here and pin our, no. Wait, oops. Wait. wait. Hey, technical, um, technical difficulties. So, um, no, don't stop video. I want to. No, yes, yes. What do you There do? we go. I want to pin oh. our video. There we are. It's funny you should ask that because we forgot to mention a huge surprise announcement at the end. And no, it's not we're getting another dog. No, it's but um, it has to do with with uh helping to get the word out. So we're okay. we're just we're gonna wrap it up in a minute or two, but um I can wait. Should we should we go ahead and announce that? Well, let's see. Um actually I want to see if we can try Sally one more time. So um, can you Sally go? does not have any audio. This is not oh, going to happen. I'm so sorry. Sally, um, so we wanted sorry. everyone to hear what Sally had to share, and you'll just have to come visit the forums because Sally is an ace in the forums. I think we're going to try to um, record it with Sally so that we can add it to this at some point. But um, 
okay. So about the big announcement, was there anything so if, else? If, um, if anybody else wants to speak, um, please uh, raise your hand. We're, we're, we just love to hear your stories about your own tripods and how you found us because really this is a celebration about all of our angels. Let's look for Nancy. And Nancy is such a huge supporter and recent, um, relatively- Nancy. Nancy DeLong, Got yes. It. So Nancy, we we're have, going wait, to go wait. ahead. Okay, we have Brownie's mom, Nancy, and then we have Applesauce's Yeah, but Nancy. we want Nancy DeLong, correct? That's Apple. Well, we want both Nancy's. We need to allow people to, um, okay. And there I we are, Nancy, can, there we are. Let's go ahead and spotlight you for just a second here. Welcome and thank you for joining us. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah, it's um, a bit of a tough day. It's I know it's applesauce's angel anniversary. It is, today. isn't it? Yeah. Has it been a year? Two years. Two years. Wow. Yeah, it's hard to believe it's that long, and it just doesn't get easier. She's she was just my heart. It's yeah. uh, tell us a quick lesson that you learned from applesauce. What was one of the things, how did she tell you to be more dog? Um, just her resiliency, you know, she, as soon as she got the amputation, which, you know, we kind of hesitated on just from different factors. Um, as soon as we got it, you know, she just was like, like I said, somebody watered her and she just bounced back. I mean, the gray receded from her face and, by that weekend, she was hopping around, you know, I'd pick up the sling and she would just look at me like, don't even touch me. <laughs> you know, just her resiliency and she was just happy. And, you know, she literally lived in the moment. She wanted what she wanted, you know, whether it was treats or to, you know, snuggle or, you know, or quick walks or, you know, her favorite thing was to be in the pool. You know, I literally had to yeah. put on the pool steps because she would go in even after, the amputation she would still get in the pool on her own and we'd raised her that she had to get in and out on the steps oh um, that's awesome that's it it was just joy you know just yeah. wrapped up in this 90 pound golden body Aww. yeah she, she's Incredible. so beautiful she's such a beautiful dog thank you for sharing that and you know it's those kinds of memories that are <laughs> our pets want us to remember about them and it's so hard especially mm -hmm. on a day like this and that's why we have the blogs and forums where you can find photos of applesauce and others as well. And since we mentioned the Oaktown pack, we do have Martha and Ralph here. Thank you for here. sharing, Nancy. Thanks so much, Nancy. Um, we wanted to go ahead and welcome Martha and Ralph, who are the reason we ended up with Wyatt Ray. Can you hear us now? <laughs> All their fault. <laughs> We've, I felt guilty all these years. <laughs> no way, man. We, we, needed, we needed Wyatt. <laughs> <laughs> on mute. Uh, not all on mute. Well, I was just, I mean, I still kind of remember the first time I saw Wyatt. It was two I'm days kidding. after his I'm amputation. Kidding. And he, I met him down at the Oakland Animal Shelter, and he was in the back of this SUV with another dog, and he was just playing with that dog nonstop. Uh, you, <laughs> to say that dog had had major surgery two days before, you would have no idea. Um, and you know shortly thereafter we ended up starting to uh foster him for a while what, we had him about a month uh a yeah month, at most maybe at a little most. bit longer i can't remember but Did not have a long time <laughs> i will never remember i never forget the phone call and i personally was not ready for a dog yet and martha just said oh <laughs> He's such a good boy. <laughs> and we had not met the Oaktown pack, so I wasn't certain, you know, what she meant by good boy and how my vision of a good boy was. But once we met Wyatt and the whole pack, it, of course, it, it timed out perfectly that we were going back to get our stuff out of storage and found a, a Jerry's Acres in Colorado. And the timing was just so perfect that we came home with him and can't thank you enough. Seriously, thank you guys. <laughs> Um, it Where? looks like oh. Sally is Believe it or not, we here. have Sally so with I, us. So we want to jump on this just make before sure we lose her. That, um, she, I heard her briefly, and now she's muted. So if, Sally, we can just get you to unmute. I should be able to unmute you, but you're not. You're, you're, you're muting yourself. Go ahead and let's see. So 
I'm going to do. Oh my God. She was actually, we could hear her for. Done speaking. There. Oh, Sally. There, she is, Sally. there you are. And now here, we're going to put you um, in here with us and that. And Sally, you're here. So people who don't aren't aware of Sally, Sally is Benny55 in the forums, came to us long ago with Happy Hannah, a bull mastiff tripod. And um, maybe you could hold that camera steady enough <laughs> so we don't get vertigo. <laughs> so can you Sally, can you hear us? Oh, we lost you. Oh, muted herself again go ahead and mute martha and ralph maybe maybe there's some okay sally can you hear us <laughs> i think we had you for a second okay um we are going to it looks like tina just shared something in the I chat i can hear you can you oh! hear me oh, there we there's are sally <laughs> i can't Oh, can you? You just muted yourself again, Sally. <laughs> so Sally's apparently tapping mute or something periodically. Um, so Sally, if you can get off mute again, we're going to give that one more try. Um, if not, we do have that big surprise. But unless... wait, I want to see what Tina put in the chat. Tina, it's so awesome that you're so... Tina's in Germany, you guys. I think you're there right now. And um, I want to see what that attachment is. That is, oh, you got to share this, Jim. He's going to share his screen right now. Can you guys, let's see. Can Hold you... on, we'll share it. So, share um, and maybe I can, um, well, when I get there, let's first find team. Let's... There she is, right there. Okay, so we're going to unmute Tina and add you as a spotlight and we'll keep Sally there just in case she comes back. Um, but Tina, thank you so much for what you said earlier. Um, and I'm gonna share this photo as you and Renee talk and, and introduce <laughs> yourself and tell us about Manny. Tina, tell oh. us tell her about, about being a tripod mom. Ooh, uh, <laughs> that comes as a surprise right now. Hi guys. Oh. Um, no, I just wanted to share that picture because that was like my one moment with uh, Wyatt and we sort of clicked, I felt, um, and he totally let me pet him and everything. And um, only afterwards did I find out that apparently wasn't the usual. Um, so. <laughs> it was not. It was not. And we could clearly, I mean, you said it in his blog in a comment, but you did have a connection with him and he didn't connect with very many people. <laughs> um, so we knew there was something special there. And why do you think you had that connection with him? Yeah, because apparently he was so much like money or money was so much like him. I don't know. Um, it, it's just, uh, I remember appro approaching Wyatt like sideways because I was taught it's, it's better for um, dogs who have the occasional difficulties with people and I did see that in money a lot if if people approached him sideways and didn't demand things necessarily of him mm -hmm. or looked directly down on him and all that kind of stuff so that's I think I did that with Wyatt I remember doing that with Wyatt and that's probably why he accepted me I don't know that's my theory you guys know better but um money would have been like that so that kind of yeah. worked and he uh -huh. was, um, yeah, he was uh, just as bad a nightmare as why it was, I guess. <laughs> uh, a nightmare and a dream. And yes. <laughs> I mentioned, um, I'm going to stop sharing this screen here so we can show everyone else. Oh, um, <laughs> can you see that? Oh, wait. Can you guys see that? Our Zoom has a way of not being able to focus on more than one. So here person. we have beautiful Manny and and Manny has a try had has um, a tripods blog where where Tina shared some beautiful posts about um, his journey. It's together. one of our favorite favorite blogs Thank out you. there. So, um, okay, what so do you think? Yeah, out. forget it. <laughs> um, it's like, okay, we're gonna try Sally one more time because I know you guys, I wanna hear what she has to say. I don't even know what she's gonna say, we don't. Um, Sally put something together just for this. So. so we've asked Sally to unmute herself one more time. Nope. Nope. Oh. <sighs> 
Got you, All Sally. Right. Sally, we there can hear we you. Are. We so can hear me. We can hear you. Hurry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh no. Oh. oh. So don't Give touch me. a thing. Stay there. Stay right where you Just are. Just don't touch a thing and tell us where do we begin with Sally. <laughs> I, I want to get me off the screen, though. How do you do that? No, no, no. You stay right where you are. Stay right just where you are. Stop moving. Okay. okay, just all right. What I want to say, first of all, to everybody, I love you, and I'm so sorry I didn't get to see everybody and hear everybody. Um, but and I and this is such and I wanted. Uh oh, are you still there? Yes, yeah, we are. Yeah, we're here. Just okay. stop moving. <laughs> I wanted to make this a celebration. And what I wanted to say was, because I was trying to think about all the life lessons and stuff, and you all really said it really good in your one of your most recent posts about Wyatt, and it was about, oh, get that thing off of me. It was about um, about him teaching you to be a good Paul, Paul parent and all that. And and as you already know, it's it's about... Our, our own life lessons and it's so beyond it's it's about teaching us how to how to be the soul that we were supposed to be when we came into this earth and that's what he and Jerry taught you to because I don't know if you knew what you were supposed to be until they told you how to be it and and they teach us just you know of course the the being being the now and but wait a minute I have to get over to the light so I can see this because I okay just don't touch okay. anything yeah I'm not <laughs> Be careful with your tablet. <laughs> All right. How did, okay. They, um, oh, that's what, yeah, I just, yeah, I just, I mean, as, okay, I'm moving. <laughs> They're oh. mer- the dogs. <laughs> and oh. as horrible as this journey is when we first start, and if we can just remember that it really is about our soul's growth and about our life lessons and stuff, and and then we we understand, you know, the dogs are already they're already enlightened. They they've already been around this world many times in many earth clothes, I believe. And I believe when they when they get it all right, they get to come back one more time as a as a dog to teach us because we can't learn from anybody else like we can learn from our dogs. So they jump into their earth clothes. And they don't care if they have to go through an amputation or anything like that, because in in time and space, you know, that's forever. And they're only in the earth clothes for like a blink of an eye. So, you know, we think, oh, gee, why would a dog choose to come here and and have to go through all this stuff? Why would why would a human being come here and choose to go through all this stuff? It's because they're already enlightened and they're teaching us and it's about love and enlightenment. So if we look at it as, and I know I'm rambling, but I'm just so glad I can finally be on here. If we just look at it as a life lesson, what, what is the message? What are they teaching us? What are we supposed to learn? We've been given this gift of their lives for however long. And as bizarre as it might seem, we've been given the gift of this journey this amputation journey to be on with them and we just have to learn from it and I feel like when we all cross over and this is for the dogs too it's because they've completed their earth mission and even in their transition whether it's peaceful or not as peaceful as we want or whatever they're still sacrifice not sacrificing they're still selflessly giving to us and and teaching us stuff. So even in those moments, and then of course they're free and they're enlightened and everything else. So anyway, that's all. I just wanted to say that we know why Jerry and Wyatt came here and 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 Manny and Nitro and all of the, we know, we know in, in part that was to bring us all together to continue to spread their love and their enlightenment and learn their lessons. Okay, bye. So now Sally is going to make me cry. Um, Thank you so much. And it's why we do what we do. So everyone can share their stories and why we have 1,500 three-legged dog and cat blogs and so many discussion forums. The connections that we've all built through something that is so awful and so nobody, I would never wish that on anybody, but to be able to, to meet people like Sally and, and share 
these gifts that our enlightened furry critters bring to us. I mean, I think that all of us together are making this world a, a happier, better place. And God knows we need it right now. <laughs> so um, Sally is one of our Tripods Helpline hosts, a toll-free number that people can now call if uh, they ever have any questions about amputation for their own dogs and cats. Um, and while she was talking, there's been some discussion in the chat about the Tripods calendars, which were oh. a nightmare this year, but um, got them done. And everyone who submitted a photo got in and anyone who didn't can add a photo on our new platform, Zazzle. Um, so those are available at gifts.tripods.com, as well as something regarding this real big announcement. Yeah, so I think we're going to start um, to, to wrap it up now. Emmy and we had asked, you know, what can I do to help, you know, reach out to other people? And since we currently are without a tripod spokes dog and can't be traveling around with Wyatt barking his head off to draw attention. Well, we have this little, this little guy, but he doesn't make much noise, but <laughs> this is our little Wyatt lookalike. I'm also going to share my screen as soon as I show you this. I'll show you the on the screen. Tell them what it is, Renee. Okay, okay. Jim's going to make our screen bigger and, and be able to show you. Um, we have decided to start the Tripods Ambassador program. <laughs> so on uh, Instagram one day, Renee got a call and, and uh, a message from someone and said, how can I be an ambassador for Tripods? Because she had put a comment out there with someone sharing a wonderful photo and said, oh, you're such a great ambassador for the community. And this kind of got the snowball we were rolling. Like, Why did we think of that and before? And we are I now mean, announcing. Every, every animal who joins us is an ambassador. Let's yeah. just get that if straight. Have, Everybody, if you have a tripod. Or had. You are an ambassador, past, present, future. But. So what we've done is create a package for official tripods <laughs> ambassadors. And um, what we've done is uh, for a nominal fee, you get the official tripods ambassador sticker. It's the only place you can get it. We'll give you a uh, tripods bandana for a small dog or cat or a large dog in your choice of colors. You'll get um, the, the, the coveted tripods merit badge, more tripod stickers. And it's not just this, you know, tripods goodies so that you can show your tripods pride. We're also going to send you a handful of um, tripods pet amputation the brochures, brochures to give to veterinarians. These are available for free at tripods.org, but we'll give you a handful of those to get to your clinic so that they can give them to other people facing amputation for their dogs and cats. There's also a flyer in there about a rehab reimbursement program and what you need to do for that. There's also postcards and all kinds of goodies that can help get the word out because, well, our, our loudmouth ambassador is no longer able to do that right now. So, so you'll get a postcards um, that you can send to people or give to people to point them towards um, tripods, bookmarks, brochures, and you can request free brochures anytime. And all you got to do is head over to gifts.tripods.com and check out the store for the new tripods ambassador kit. So and there you, you go, select, Emmy, there's an answer to your question. Select your size of bandana, your color, and you can enter any amount here um, to co help cover costs and you can enter any amount above that to help keep your community online. Okay. That's awesome. Yay. Okay. So let's see. All right, you guys. Well, we can't thank you enough for being here. I'm just so touched and I know you are too. It's been incredible. This, uh, the number of people that showed up never from way back when that. new people that have just joined others who have never heard of us to learn about, Wyatt and Jerry and, and Applesauce and Hannah and so many tripod angels out there that we can't even begin. Um, so on that note, I think we're just going to say thank you. Thank you. For thank you for being part of this community. All you do. You are what makes the community such the valuable resource it has become. There was one question out there about when's the second book coming? And well, this one took you know, 20 years in the making, if you count since Jerry was a puppy, about 10 years to write. Wyatt does deserve his own book and and in its and his own story will be shared in its good time. But Be More Dog, in the meantime, is available at bemoredog.net. Oh, you disappeared. Send people okay. to tripods.org 
for Our information programs. about the rehab program, the helpline, the a surgery program, mm -hmm. and send them to tripods.com for any uh, free resources and videos that we have or become an ambassador today and we'll get you all sorts of material to do that for us. And again, we can't thank you enough. Thank you, everybody. Please go give your critters lots of loving because uh, we don't have any around us right now. So give them extra loving from us. And, um, and we'll see you online in the vlogs and forums love and you. on the Tripod's social media channels. So thanks again for joining us.